recently came across a study that was claiming that releasing a tongue tie in children with cerebral palsy can improve speech, feeding, and sleep outcomes. Now, besides the fact that that's a super broad claim, when I was looking at the study, there was a lot of issues with it, honestly. But one of the things I wanted to point out was that the authors chose to not use objective measures as a way to show whether the intervention was effective or not. And this is a problem because when we look at subjective measures like parent report, there's a lot of room for bias in there. And that doesn't mean that the parent experience or in other subjective measures, the patient experiences don't matter, but it's really important that if we're trying to show a causal effect in something, that we are trying to be objective. And in a situation like this, when we're looking at sleep, speech and feeding, we have objective measures to look at different areas of each of those. So why would we not use them? And by asking that question alone, I can start to think about like, okay, well, maybe there's some conflicts of interest here. Did the authors maybe want to prove a point that they weren't going to see with objective measures? They use objective measures and then decide not to report those in the research. So then we start to get into like publication bias. All this to say, this is why we have to think critically about the research that we're looking at. A title is just meant to draw your attention. An abstract is to market it to you and make you really want to read it. But actually getting into the nitty gritty of the article is what truly matters so that we can determine where it fits in a body of evidence when we are providing care to patients and families. Some food for thought for the day. Check out the caption for some references of research that I do recommend you look at regarding feeding interventions for cerebral palsy.